I'm not sure this is going to amount to anything, but fucking hell. That's a bad way to start it. I wanted to get some things off my chest about anything. I want to talk about the... the, the I was told the other day, you know, <clears throat> why don't you... Why don't you never take anything for pay and and uh, just volunteer all your time away, you know, helping people or, or doing, you know, whatever. Because I, I told the person I wanted to help people. You don't, don't make off me. present me with my options, you know? It's the, it's the option that's the problem. Oh, you can, if you don't like this, you can do this. If you don't like this, you can do this. Well, the thing that I don't like is not mitigated, does not go away when I choose to volunteer. That doesn't take away the structure, the system that allows for the exploitation that I would be volunteering to assuage. And so I'm not going to go and chase my tail volunteering when the thing I'm trying to fix is never remedying itself. So what's wrong? What's wrong with everything that I, you know, that I'm so angry about? It's so easy to have this conversation with another person, but it's difficult to have it with myself and to just have it with a camera. If you were to ask me why I think capitalism is a problem, I mean, it's, it's a huge answer. I'll start by saying that I don't think we're supposed to be competing with each other on the level that we are. Pioneering and ingenuity and progress. I don't think that these things come out of iron sharpening iron, fierce competition, the competitive drive that's instilled in us through everything around us. But an organization based on measurables. We love to measure things and, and compare them to each other and, and weigh them across binaries and you know it's it's really uh, who's to say that everything that we've created couldn't be better if we had a system where no money was exchanged for example well, how, that, that, socialism doesn't work Marxism doesn't work Lenin tried it look at all these failed examples of Utopias have just completely failed to operate. And I mean, you could say that's just based on their their principle, but I really think that you have to look to the historical and material conditions of their existence, like what they existed within, what they existed in relation to. So what I'm saying is not that we need some sort of Marxist, socialist, whatever system. It's almost more realistic, believable, that we could enter a system of totalitarianism, of dictatorial oppression, even amongst our own, you know, imperialist endeavors into other countries to eradicate the same sort of dictatorial power. We, we can quite easily see it, the possibility, much more so than the possibility of a, a disillusion of government and everyone is, you know, free and equal and pure anarchy. How should we look at things? How should we look at anything? I'm not going to be specific right now. I think we need to account for the multiplicity of its existence. There are incompatible truths. And it's not just based on you and me. It's based on the way that a corporation views that thing. It's based on the way that a government views that thing. It's based on the way that another thing comes into contact with that thing. I mean that everything does not just always exist. We're not just going along and plucking out whole, whole after whole after whole and sort of trying to mash all of those holes, those complete things together to form a, a, an understanding or a, a body of knowledge about the things in the world and the way they are and how they are. It's just not that simple. Everything is conditioned or, or created or generated or produced or comes into its being 
the way that we understand being, you know, the way a thing exists, it comes into that existence through its mutual engagement and its relationship with everything around it. It's not this static sort of whole that was always there. We make it. You and I make it. He makes it and she makes it and it makes it and they make it. All of them make it. You know what I, you know what I'm getting to? It's something that can never come into full resolution. It's, it's like the, the quantum sea foam theory. Unnavigatable moments. Rhizomatic to use uh, Deleuze and Guattari. There's not just one taproot structure. Everything has enormous roots that, that entangle and sever, cross, and bleed into other roots. And everything is connected to the same structure. Energy and life is sucked away from certain parts, fed into others. Nothing is ever at a point, in my opinion, where we can comfortably call it fact or law or rule or whatever. Everything is constantly in flux. You know, the, the systems and the structures that we have established, ideology in general, all ideologies, are unattainable. Always a process of, of negotiating an unnegotiable un path. Now, I don't know if this is a setup for more of these. You know what I mean? This is just sort of trying to explain how I view things, why I view them that way, so that maybe I can I can start to, to make videos like this, do the same sort of thing that my writing practice is doing. Make a digested, palatable, audience-friendly presentation of my thoughts and ideas. Because 